Okay, so let's see how all of this works in action. A few minutes ago, off camera, I created a version control repository, a master copy on the softwarecarpentry.org server. The first time you use version control, you could create the repository on the same machine that you've got your working copy. That's a bad idea. One of the reasons you use version control is to give you a safe backup of your work. And if it's on the same hard drive as the one that you're carrying around with you, the one that your daughter might throw in the lake because you've been spending too much time programming, you'll use your backup as well as your work. That's not a good idea. You can use cloud-based services like SourceForge or GitHub. Your department may have something set up on its server. Your lab may set something up. Whatever your solution is, you want to make sure that the repository is on a different machine from the place where you're actually doing your work. Here's what I'm going to do to grab a working copy of that version control repository. I say subversion. I want to check out. And then there will be a URL that identifies that particular repository. In my case, it's http colon double slash svn.softwarecarpentry.org slash tutvc, which is short for tutorial on version control. Checkout gets you your initial working copy. You only run that once per computer per project. You don't need to rerun that over and over again. So when I type this, it goes off and grabs me that repository. Now, when you do this, it will probably ask you for a password or for a username and password. This is working without those because I've already logged into that version control system more than once from this laptop and it remembers the credentials. The very first time you connect, it will try to use whatever username you've got on the laptop or computer that you're using and just ask you for the password. Whoever set up the repository has to have given you that. Some repositories are public. You can always read from them without a password, but you need a password to commit. Again, your instructor will walk you through this because different places will set it up differently. If I now do an ls, I can see that I have a new directory called tutvc. And inside tutvc is nothing. Okay. Inside toot is all the stuff that I did this morning. So I am going to copy toot slash star dot star into toot vc. That copies count output dot text, count dot shell, because those are the files that are something dot something. I'm going to copy them from the tutorial directory this morning, which wasn't under version control, into excuse me, into my working copy. Okay, and now I'm going to copy recursively the data directory, that means the directory and everything below it. And I'm also going to copy that over to tootvc. So now if I take a look at tootvc, I see the files that I want. Let's cd into tootvc and ls. Now wait a second. Let's have a look at count output. Right, that's the output of running the analysis. Do I want to save that? Well, probably not. Uh, that's a file that I can easily recreate by rerunning count.shell. I don't think it belongs under version control. If it was a final result that I was using in a paper, probably. But this was just a temporary file that we created to show you that you could redirect the output of count.shell to a file. So I'm going to get rid of that and make sure that the only things I commit to version control are the things that I created by hand that have a long life in front of them. Intermediate files, the .o or .obj files created by compilers, temporary data files, things like that. Editor backup files mostly don't go into version control because there's no reason to save them in the long term. Now, let's svn add count.shell. Before I do that, I'm inside the version control working copy directory. And I can do svn info and it will tell me, yes, this is the working copy from version control. Here's the URL of the repository. Here's a whole bunch of other information, including what revision is this currently at, and when was the last change. Okay. SVN space info. 
All of the subversion commands start SVN, and then there's the verb that you actually want. SVN checkout, SVN info, and the others that we're going to see. So, I will do SVN add count.shell and SVN add data. Now, when I did the SVN add of count.shell, it added one file. When I did SVN add data, because data is a directory, it added the directory and everything underneath it. And now, if I do SVN status, it says, all right, what you are presently planning to do is add the following to the master copy. It has not actually pushed anything to the master yet. Because I might do an SVN add and then realize I've added a bunch of junk files that shouldn't be there or this one isn't quite working yet. Whatever the problem is, there's only one command that actually pushes changes to the master. Everything else works with your local copy. When I say SVN add, what I'm actually saying is add these files and directories to the list of things that version control is responsible for managing. I have not added them to the master. I've added them to the roster of things that version control is supposed to take care of. And now comes the crucial step. SVN commit, and I'm going to give it a comment, dash M for message, quote, uh, importing files created in this morning's tutorial. Now, I could list just specific files or directories, and it would only commit those. If I don't give anything, it commits all of my changes. So, I am going to commit all of the changes to the master. That's the one command that pushes things from my working copy up to the master copy. And it says, here's what I'm doing. I've transmitted the file data. We've committed, and now we've created revision one. And it's important to remember that revision numbers don't apply to individual files or directories. The repository is the thing that moves from one revision to the next. If I say version five of a file, what I mean is the state of the file in version five of the whole repository. Because if you've got a large commit, if you've got lots of files or a flaky network connection, you might actually lose network connectivity partway through. And it would be really bad if half your changes had been committed but the other half hadn't. Version control doesn't let that happen. When you do a commit, either everything goes or nothing goes. And that's a very strong guarantee. If you've got 1,500 files, it might take a few minutes to upload them all. If you lose your network connection in the middle, none of your changes will show up on the master. You'll have to do the whole thing over again, but that is a lot safer than having half your files go over where other people can now get them, and the other half haven't, and the repository's in an inconsistent state. So, SVN info. Okay, it says we are now, oh, last change grab is one. So let's go and do SVN update. Update means go and get things from the master for me. <clears throat> I'm at revision one. I'm in sync with the master copy. Right? It didn't download any files. Now let's edit a file. I'm going to use nano on count.shell. And I'm going to say um, results are displayed in alphabetic order by species name. Just add a bit more comment to the file. And now the phone rings. And my concentration is broken and I've got 15 minutes arguing with the student about one-tenth of one percent of a grade on an assignment that is only worth five percent of the final course assignment, but it seems to be really important to them. I forgot what I was doing. I come back, I say subversion, what's my status? The M means modified. Count.shell is the only thing in the current directory that has been modified. Okay, SVN diff, count.shell. Show me the differences between what was in revision one and what's in my working copy. And again, this rather strange string here says lines one to six replaced with lines one to seven. What we've done is delete that line, that's the minus sign there, and add these two lines. Right? And that's what the diff is showing me. That first column highlights where things were taken out and new things were put in. So now I can see what's the difference between my starting point and where I am right now. All right, I've decided that changing the comment isn't particularly useful. Subversion, let's revert count.shell. That means put it back to the starting point. Just throw away my local changes. 
And now if I do SVN diff on count.shell, there is no difference. Now this is really handy. If you spend half an hour trying to implement a new algorithm, you've made changes all over the place and you realize, oh, this is more complicated than I thought. It's not likely going to work. I need to break it down into smaller pieces and test them independently. You don't have to undo in your head and edit backwards. You can just say subversion. Please revert all of these files back to my starting point. The longer you work before you realize that you need to undo things, the more you're likely to lose. And this again is why you try to size things so that they all fit into about an hour's work. Because then, if you're working late at night, on the weekend, under pressure for a deadline, and you realize that you've gone down the wrong path, you don't lose four hours of work, you lose one hour's work. And often smaller. I often make just a few lines, three lines, four lines change, and commit that because that's one logical unit of change. That's one thought. So that if I need to undo something, I can undo just that one change. So, let's go back in here and say... Um, what's the change I'm going to make? Oh, I know what I will do. I'm going to take the output of my pipeline and sort that again in numeric order and reverse it. What does this do? Well, bash, let's run count.shell. So what I'm seeing now is instead of sorting alphabetically by species name, I'm sorting numerically by frequency in reverse order. The largest first. By, de by default, sort will do small numbers before large numbers, increasing order. Reversing that gives them large then small. So here I've got two turtles, two turtles, a shark and a marlin, and now I'm seeing the three sharks and two marlins ahead of all of the less common species. Okay, SVN, what's my status? I've modified count.shell. SVN diff. All right, all I did was add the sort-n-r onto that one line. I can see exactly what I did. Version commit, ordering output per file by decreasing frequency. All right, that's a small change, but it's one logical unit of work. It's one step that I might want to undo, so I do that commit. Okay, so far so good, but what if I am using another machine? What if somebody else is editing these files as well? Let's pause for a moment while my assistant does an edit on her machine, and then we'll come back and see what happens here.